Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Mario and today we're going back to the air fryer. We're going to make a personal sized pizza that happens to be keto and low carb friendly. Stick around. What I have here is some uh, BJ's Wellesley Farm brand thick sliced bacon. And I'm going to cook this first in the air fryer because it's not going to cook on the pizza well enough. So uh, normally you would cook this at about 370 for six minutes if you were just going to eat bacon. But uh, this is going to end up as a topping on the bacon, uh, on the pizza itself. So I don't want to cook it too much because it's going to get cooked a little bit more uh, when the pizza is cooking. Okay, we're going to do 370, somewhere between four and six minutes, and then we'll cut it into small pieces. And I think we're good. So here's our bacon. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to cut this up and throw it in a bowl. And there's our bacon. Okay, so my fathead dough recipe calls for six to eight ounces of cheese or one and a half cups. This is reading 12 ounces, but that's because of the bowl. And this is simply uh, from BJ's. It's a uh, low moisture shredded mozzarella. Next, we need four ounces of Philly cheese. I picked this up in bulk at BJ's. We're going to zero out the scale and see if this actually equals four ounces. And it does, perfectly four ounces. So I'm going to break this up a little bit. Now we're going to microwave this for about a minute. And then we're going to stir everything up and microwave it in 30 second intervals as needed to make it consistent. Okay, this has been in there for a minute. We're going to start to stir this up. It's really important that you get a, a good consistency here and everything is mixed really well. Back in the microwave you go. Okay, went in for another 30 seconds. This is looking good. Looking really nice and mixed. Okay, on to the next step. I got about two cups of almond flour here. It's this, uh, picked it up at BJ's, Red Hill. Uh, I'm gonna put about one cup of it in there, or half of it. And as well, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder that will help this rise just a little bit. I'm also going to add in one egg, and I need to be careful of where I pour that egg, because if it comes in direct contact with that hot cheese, it could start to cook in there. And that we do not want. Okay, so we're going to keep mixing this up until it's uh, good mixed, and then we'll add the flour. And you have, might have to add more or less than the two cups, you know, that's just a, a guesstimate. It all depends on the size of the egg that could change that and the moisture. You could also use a small mixer for this if you wanted to. I'm going to pour in the rest of the almond flour. Now, if you have a nut allergy, there are other recipes that do not use almond flour. You can use coconut flour. Okay, I'm going to start to mix this by hand, but the important thing is to keep your fingers wet because otherwise it's going to stick to your fingers and make a mess. Probably would be better to have a uh, cup of water here to keep sticking my fingers in handy. But... Okay, so our dough's pretty mixed up and ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these uh, little pans that came with my Go Eyes accessory kit I bought. Now, Go Wise does sell a basket that's just flat, so you can like grill a steak, and it would probably be a good idea if I had that to cook the pizza on. But this is what I have. This is what I'm going to use. You can also put it right in the basket, but it would be hard to uh, kind of get that out of there without doing something. I got these parchment papers again. I wish I had them without the circles, but or the holes punched. But I think we'll be okay. I'll put it in. I just won't put the pizza to the edges in here. So we'll get a piece of dough. I'm guessing on the amount. Now we're going to cook this dough first. And if you saw my first pizza video, you'll see that I showed my mistake where I tried to cook this with the pizza and that did not work out. So I cooked the dough separately. And I did that in the uh, Breville. But today I'm going to be doing it in the Go Wise. And hopefully this is enough weight so it won't fly around uh, in the air fryer because uh, things do go airborne from that, from that uh, massive airflow. Um, I'm also going to put a link in the description. I saw this, I think it was General Electric came out with a new stove that they call an air fryer stove. I mean, I assume it's just, you know, a fancier convection, but it would be interesting. I'm not saying I would, uh, you know, put a brick into my stove, but if I happen to do that by accident, of course, I would be tempted to uh, get that new stove. I'm going to get one of those cheap uh, puncture rollers, but for now I'm just going to use this fork and poke holes 
this will do two things. It'll keep the dough from bubbling up and it'll help it cook more evenly. So let's just keep going with this. Use what you have, folks. Okay, I got my air fry. I did cook bacon in this, so it's probably going to smoke up a little bit, but I'm going to drop this pan right in there. And I'm pretty sure it's heavy enough that it's just going to stay where it is. So let's get this in the air fryer. Now, normally I would cook this at 400 at about 10 minutes in the Breville, but we're going to cook this at about 350. We'll start at six minutes, maybe go up to as far as 11, depending, and uh, we'll see how it works out. Okay, that's four or five minutes. Let's give it a look. Not bad. We're going to take this out, make it a little easier to work on. And it's good to mention that this stay put didn't go anywhere in the air fryer. Now, I have my own uh, keto low carb sauce. However, BJ's had on sale this uh, Rayo's, and I guess, or if that's the way you pronounce it, and this seems to be a big deal in the keto low carb place. And the nutrition information is uh, an important thing to look at. I'll pop a picture in the corner here. But a half a cup of this is four grams of carbs. Now, I'm pretty sure this isn't going to need a half a cup. So I'm going to put some of this in here and, uh, and we'll see how much it works out to. That is three tablespoons right there. So that's less than two carbs. And actually, this is a lot of sauce. I probably could have got away, and I'm taking some off, with just two tablespoons. So that means this is like one carb of sauce for this personal size pizza. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, this marinara sauce already has salt, pepper, olive oil, uh, basil, and a couple other things. But it's probably not as much as I would like. So I'm just going to put on a touch of pink Himalayan salt, a touch of fresh ground pepper, and you can do whatever you want to this. When I make my sauce, you know, I put these things in it. A little bit of basil. Again, these things are already in there, but this is just the way I like it. A little bit of oregano, and you could put maybe Italian seasoning on here as well. In fact, this fathead dough, if you were to throw in like a... Uh, couple of teaspoons of Italian seasoning it could be its own type of like garlic bread or whatever okay I got some more of my low skim mozzarella cheese shredded I'm uh, not hungry really but looking at this pizza makes me hungry again this is a personal size pizza this is probably the equivalent of uh, maybe two slices depending where you go some places this would be the equivalent of one slice and I need to test this cheese I have some uh, thin sliced pepperoni. I don't want to just put it on because uh, when you go to take a bite out of the pizza, it's going to basically tear everything up. So I'm basically going to cut it into small pieces and then I'll put it on the pizza. And I got some of this bacon here. I'm probably also going to make a pepper and onion. That's what my wife likes. So Donna will get uh, the pepper and onion and I may try it. But I have a, I'll use chopped pepper and onion because you don't want those big, you know, cuts on something like this. So it'll just tear the pizza apart. All right. Try a piece. Bacon. Okay. I'm going to put this in the GoWise tray. Now, my biggest fear is the toppings flying around the air fryer. So we'll have to see what happens. Worst case, I'll have to cover this with tin foil uh, just to keep that from happening. I'm going to do this at 350. We'll start at about four to six minutes and see where the cheese is at. And we're gonna also see if anything flew around in that time frame. This has only been in there for a minute or two, but uh, the cheese is already mostly melted. So I'm gonna pump this up to 400 to get that cheese nice and melted. A couple of the pieces did fly around a little bit, but I stuck them back down and it's been doing good ever since. Okay, let's take this bad boy out. All right, let's take this pizza out. Wish I had it. Better tongs, I just scratched my pan here a little bit. Okay, we're gonna get this transferred over to a plate. Okay, I'm gonna cut this up. This measured out about seven inches. So it's probably on par the size of, let's say, a kid sized pizza at Uno's or something like that. But this whole thing, I'm eating less these days because I'm getting more filled with these types of things. So I think this will be just fine. Okay, let's give this a try. Okay, here's another look at that pizza. Now, 
when I cooked this the first time in the Breville, if you saw my last pizza video, you'll know that, again, I tried to cook the dough with all the toppings, which was a mistake, and I showed you that mistake so you wouldn't make it. So I did another one in the same video, and I pre-cooked it, and it was fine. With this one, I did not flip the dough after I cooked it. Um, I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not, but I just want to point that out, that I could have, after I cooked it, was to flip it around. So I'm going to pick the nicest looking piece. Dough's holding up well. That's pretty good. I think the bacon and pepperoni was a good choice, or one or the other. When I made the Supreme Pizza, don't get me wrong, it was good. But I think there were so many toppings on there, all the flavors got lost. And I'll be making my wife the pepper and onion one as well. She saw the bacon and said, yeah, I want some of that too. Half time going on here. You can absolutely make this with regular dough. I'm using the fathead dough recipe simply because I'm on a diet. Uh, I haven't made regular pizza dough in quite some time now. So again, yes, you can make pizza dough. And the, the good thing about the regular pizza dough is you do not have to use that parchment paper liner. You can just do it in the pan and it'll be fine like that. Um, links in the description for everything I use. Uh, please consider joining my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest groups. Those links will also be in the description. Let's get back to the food. Making Donna's pepper, onion, and now bacon pizza. Going through the same steps. We are going to cook this for this dough for about five minutes or so. And maybe we'll flip this one over when it's done and put all the toppings on the other side. 350, and we'll leave it at that. Okay, let's check this out. That looks pretty good. I am going to flip this around and cook it a couple more minutes because I want to see how it turns out. As you can see, the bottom of the dough isn't all cooked that well, so I think it's an important step to do this is to flip it and cook it a little longer. We'll check this for three minutes and see how it looks. Okay, let's we'll see where we're at with side two. That looks good. Pull this out. Use more of the rayos. I think two tablespoons is probably a good amount, depending how saucy you like your pizza. Yeah, two tablespoons is perfect. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna add some pink Himalayan salt. If this didn't have olive oil already in it, I would drizzle a little bit of olive oil. A little fresh ground pepper, a little basil, a little oregano, a little low skim mozzarella cheese. I don't think she wants a lot of cheese on that, so that's probably already too much. She's a big pepper and onion fan, so I'm going to put some of that on here. Again, peppers and onions, natural sugars in there. So... Take that into account when you're doing keto. There are some sugars, therefore carbs. And the green peppers. Probably the smart thing would have, to have done was maybe to pre-cook these just a little bit because I don't think they're going to get necessarily cooked as much as they could. And again, I'm not using the big chunks of hooped cut peppers and onions. I think this is a better way to go for this small pizza. And she said she wanted some bacon, so she's getting bacon. I'm putting more on hers than I did on mine. Let's pan back in and let's cook this up. Okay. Now with the last pizza, I could have got away with 400 because everything was cooked. The peppers and onions aren't cooked. So I'm in that great debate with myself of what temperature I should do so that those peppers and onions have a little more time to cook without the cheese, you know, burning. So I'm going to leave this, you know, around the 350, 370 mark. Let this cook up and when that cheese melts, we'll be good to go. Okay, let's take this out. That looks nice, and the crust, oh, that's nice too. All right, let's get this transfer to the plate. And I'm gonna take it off the parchment paper because I don't think it needs it. Now the toppings did blow around just a little bit, uh, but not much we can do about that. 
Oh yeah, that crust is making a, a cutting noise. I might have to try one of these pieces too. Maybe before Donna gets hers. Yeah, that one looks a bit better. I am going to try at least a bite of one of them. After all, the chef always tests his food. I don't even need to take another bite. That dough's perfect. Okay. The key in the air fryer, or in general, with this pat head dough, is you know, you lay it out, you poke the holes in it, you cook it. When it's brown, you take it out, you flip it, brown the other side. That is critical. Um, you know, add your sauce, your cheese, your toppings, your, your seasoning, whatever the case it is. And that, my friends, is a great pizza. I think by far this is the best pizza I have made. It came out great. I love it and I'm happy. And that makes that batch I made will make like four pizzas anyway. Uh, to date on keto, I think this is day 59, I have lost 33 pounds. I am thrilled. This is great. Uh, you know, I got to get all new pants now, but I'm going to wait because I'm hoping to drop uh, maybe another 20 pounds or so. And we'll leave it at that. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Today we get to unplug the air fryer. How is it? It's good. It's good. She likes it. That's all we need to do. Hi.